Finally, it's here. With me is Frameworks new 16 inch laptop. If you're unaware of the hype surrounding Framework, they're a new laptop manufacturer that burst onto the scene three years ago. What makes them so unique is that their laptops are completely upgradable, from the CPU to the speakers to the display. This completely takes the stress out of the buying process as you can relax knowing you can upgrade your laptop later on. Plus, it's better for the environment, and we love that. Now, I'm making a big push with my videos to tell you the conclusion up front. But in this case, there are just so many innovations with this laptop that you kind of need to watch it right through for the conclusions to even make sense. In fact, since this is just such an important laptop, both Taylor and I reviewed it to ensure that you get a more well-rounded and thorough perspective. Our model has the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS processor paired with AMD's Radeon 7700S graphics and 16GB of DDR5 5600 memory. And we have a ton of options for this laptop that we're going to show you. Look and feel. The laptop looks very blocky and a little dated, but once you turn on the keyboard's RGB, it looks nice enough. Also, the replaceable coloured bezels may improve the look further. The bottom part of the laptop feels rigid and there is minimal flex on the keyboard deck. However, the lid unfortunately, it just isn't very rigid and has a lot of flex to it. If you have the dedicated graphics expansion bay module in, the back of the laptop is extended out. This makes the laptop's overall footprint quite large for a 16 inch one, especially considering that this doesn't have the most powerful laptop components inside. Compared to similar laptops, it's larger than the Legion Slim 7, the MacBook Pro 16, and significantly larger than Lenovo's compact Yoga Pro 9i. Now, if you don't use the dedicated graphics, the laptop is physically smaller, but it is still larger than many laptops in 2024 that do have dedicated graphics. Look at the large bezel below the screen. Other competing laptops don't have that. Hopefully in future, Framework can put an even larger display in this laptop to make use of that space. In terms of weight, it's about middle of the pack for a 16-inch laptop. But portability is enhanced by the use of USB-C charging. Our model came with a 180 watt charger. The ports do actually support 240 watts of charging, so in the future, this laptop can support high powered components inside. And yes, it is compatible with USB Power Delivery 3.1. On that note, let's deep dive the ports, as this is an area where Framework have just completely innovated. The laptop has six hot swappable ports. You've got options for USB-C ports that support charging, USB-A, HDMI, DisplayPort, storage, audio, a mini SD card reader, and even 2.5 gig Ethernet. Now, on that Ethernet port, it's the only one of these expansion cards to stick out. So be careful if you're putting the laptop in and out of a backpack or a sleeve, as that one could catch. And FYI, a full-sized SD card reader is coming soon. I cannot stress how incredible the flexibility of being able to swap and even upgrade your ports are. Now, a little note, not all port expansion slots support all types and speeds. For example, only the back ports on each side of the laptop support USB 4.0 transfer speeds. The details are on screen right now. There is only one display available and it is a good one. It's a 16 inch panel with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It is bright at 500 nits and color accurate. The display offers a refresh rate of up to 165 Hertz and has dynamic switching available for those that want to conserve battery life. And yes, the screen supports variable refresh rate with AMD's FreeSync. It is also an anti-glare matte panel, so no distracting reflections to worry about. As this laptop is heavily targeting software developers, as a coder myself, I just want to add the following. A resolution of 2560 by 1600 is great for gaming on a 16 inch laptop. The pixels per inch of 189 is good enough for content on screen to look clear while not being too taxing during gaming. However, for coders specifically who look at very small text all day, this is just not the most ideal pixel density for you. A MacBook Pro 16 offers 254. A high pixel density display like the MacBooks will make small text look crisper and your eyes will thank you. Look, I don't want you to think that the framework screen is bad for coding. It's not. It will work fine. It's just not as good as a MacBooks or another laptop that has a high resolution panel with a similar size and brightness. The keyboard is comfortable enough. It has 1.5 millimeters of key travel and key presses are very quiet, which makes this an excellent keyboard for class or office use. But the downside of this quiet keyboard is that you lose that satisfying click that you get when you press a key on a louder one. For example, Lenovo's Legion Slim 7, it just feels so much more clicky and that makes it more satisfying. Now, when it comes to the keyboard's layout, it is standard with no stupidity. So thankfully, no dedicated page up and down keys placed right up against the arrow keys that you might accidentally mispress. Instead, these keys are secondary functions. Each key is individually RGB lit and the fingerprint reader in the power button, it works well. 
Now, this keyboard is extremely innovative in terms of its customizability. You can shift the keyboard to the left or right and add a number pad or an RGB macro pad. Never heard of a macro pad? It is a set of keys that you can program to whatever you want. And you can set custom colors for each key. There are so many use cases where this could be useful. Imagine if someone developed software that turned this into a stream deck. Press a key to change camera angles or invoke a scene change. And when it comes to programming, this keyboard does support the open source QMK project. Now, if you aren't using the keyboard with a number pad or the macro pad, you can center it and fill in the gaps to the side with spaces or even the LED matrices. LED matrices allow you to run light shows. They're fun, but after about 30 seconds, they're just going to annoy you. So I'd suggest buying it with the spaces instead. The trackpad I don't love. Tracking is decent, as is the click, and it recognizes gestures well but its palm rejection is really rough. Numerous times while writing this very script, I found my cursor just jumped unintentionally, which resulted in me swearing at Taylor profusely. And I gotta be honest, he deserves better than that. This is a laptop you really need to use with a mouse. Sound. Unfortunately, like the trackpad, the speakers on this laptop are challenging. They don't have very much bass, they don't sound all that clear, and under Windows, they just don't get very loud. I say under Windows, as the speakers were actually far louder when we tried them using Linux. Plus, the right speaker, it kept dropping out. Reseating the cable did fix it, but temporarily. Look, you really don't want to keep opening your laptop to get stereo sound out of it. Hopefully Framework will address this in future versions, but overall, the speakers are just middling for a laptop in 2024, which unfortunately is what we've come to expect from prior Framework laptops. The 1080p webcam is not great either. The colors seem a bit off and it just isn't that clear. The mic and camera each have individual physical privacy shutters though, which is nice. Configuration software. All right, to configure this laptop, you basically need a computer science degree, which may be okay as this laptop is really aimed at programmers. There are two applications to change lighting, one for the keyboard's backlight and one for the LED matrices. Look, people in tech are gonna completely relate to what I'm about to say. It's like Framework has had a backend software developer build these screens. They look like they're from the 1990s. It's completely overwhelming and mostly unnecessary for people who just want the Q key to be blue. Now all the keys on my keyboard's top row are Q keys. When it comes to changing the performance modes, CPU performance is controlled through Windows Power Settings. GPU performance though is controlled through AMD software. Performance. On that note, let's talk performance. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, the Ryzen 7840HS is an okay performer. It beats out the same processor in our Legion Slim 7. That being said, it is substantially behind Intel's 13th Gen H series processors in this test. Please note, compared to Intel's new Meteor Lake processor, it performs faster in single core and slightly worse in multi-core. That being said, the Meteor Lake processor in this comparison is in the small HP Spectre 14. I know it seems completely ridiculous to compare these two laptops, but right now it's the only Meteor Lake Core Ultra processor that we had on hand. In Cinebench, which tests the processor when maxed out, for the most part, it's a similar story. The performance is okay, but lags behind competing Intel processors. When we look at power draw, the Framework 16, according to our measurements, can draw up to 60 watts and around 45 watts continuously. Now, what's interesting here is that this laptop performed around the same as our Legion Slim 7 while drawing less power. This is actually not all that surprising. These processors have significant diminishing marginal returns above a certain power draw. With that said, our performance per watt, i.e. power efficiency graph, shows that the Ryzen processor in this Framework 16 is very efficient, which is just great to see. The only laptop that beat it is the MacBook Pro 16 with the M3 Max chip. Look, to round out CPU performance, for a fairly large 16-inch laptop, it's really nothing all that special. I'm now going to hand it over to Taylor for graphics performance, as he's one of our resident gamers and video editors. This laptop uses AMD Radeon RX 7700S graphics, which is unusual. Its graphics performance in TimeSpy is a little below an RTX 4060, but well above a 4050. However, while gaming in Cyberpunk, it performs identically to our Legion Slim 7 with the same CPU and an RTX 4060. But laptops with NVIDIA graphics get access to their excellent DLSS3, which gives you extra frame generation. AMD laptops do have access to FSR3, but it doesn't seem to be as widely supported in games. For video editing, when navigating the timeline and actually editing the videos, the experience was fine. Exporting a video was a little bit faster than on our Slim Pro 9i, which has an Intel 13th Gen H series processor and an RTX 4050, but only by about 30 seconds. Battery life. 
When on battery, there is no noticeable drop in CPU performance, which is good. While on battery, we ran the laptop CPU at max for 30 minutes and recorded 60% battery remaining, which is honestly about as good as you're going to get, and on par with the MacBook Pro 16 with the M3 Max, although that laptop is a lot more powerful. For a more realistic test, we ran a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi for 4 hours. The screen was set to 200 nits of brightness and the laptop was in best battery setting. At the end, we recorded 35% remaining, which is certainly not a good result, but also nowhere near the worst we've seen from similar laptops. Upgradability is fantastic on this laptop, there is no other laptop that we can even compare it to. A lot of care has been made to ensure that this laptop is as simple to take apart and reassemble as possible. You can even sell your old parts if you want to. And the guides online, they're super easy to follow, although they really need to update the Linux install guide to suggest that you turn off BitLocker first. And on that note, we installed Ubuntu Linux on this laptop. We tested the speakers, the webcam, the mic, the Wi-Fi, the trackpad, and the USB-C port, and it all worked well. As I said, the speakers even worked better than on Windows. I tried a game of CS2 on Linux. Overall, it seemed to work as well as Windows. The only issue I did have was lag spikes for around 30 seconds to a minute after initially loading into the game. But after that, it smoothed out and never happened again, even after restarting the game and the laptop. This could be a CS issue though, and not a Linux or framework issue, so keep that in mind. Back to you, Josh. Heat and fan noise. All right, so we've saved the worst till last, unfortunately, which is heat and fan noise. The way this laptop's fans work is that they very quickly spin up during high performance tasks, and then they become dead silent the moment you no longer need them. This makes the laptop very quiet when doing something like programming where you only occasionally need performance. They only spin up when you're compiling code or running a test. And if you're using the laptop for casual use, it's pretty quiet. But when the fans do spin up, it's very noticeable. And it's not just the volume that gets you, which can be very loud, it's the pitch, which makes it extremely noticeable. And because as I said, they spin up and then they spin back down so quickly, you really notice the fluctuations. Furthermore, under load, we did notice some electrical noise coming from the laptop's keyboard area, which to our ears sounded a lot like coil whine. When it comes to heat you feel, in benchmarks, things look pretty good for this laptop. But it's misleading because of how we measure heat you feel. You see, we take the max of the keyboard deck and palm rest during intensive tasks. So most laptops only hit these temperatures in a very small part of the keyboard. The framework on the other hand is warm to very warm across the entire keyboard deck and palm rest. This makes this laptop uncomfortable to use for tasks like coding, gaming, or video editing. And by the way, what I'm talking about right now is with the graphics module in. Now, we did try this laptop without the graphics module and temperatures and fan noise were much improved. Still warm, particularly on the left side, but it was manageable. So this leads us to our conclusion. We love Framework and the many innovations that they are bringing to the laptop space, but we owe it to you, our viewers, to really call it as it is. As a 16-inch performance-focused laptop, this one is average at best with a high price tag. I mean, with the graphics module included, you're looking at well north of $2,000, and it has so many usability issues. So here's where we land. If you want that framework experience right now, I'd recommend buying the Framework 13 with AMD. Its Zen 4 U series processor is plenty powerful for applications like software development, and its heat and fan noise is acceptable. It's no MacBook, but it's pretty good for a 13.5 inch laptop. And if you want a larger display for it, buy an external monitor. Look, the Framework 16 without the graphics module is certainly more usable, so you could buy it if you are extremely bored into Framework's mission. But if you want a 16 inch laptop with dedicated graphics right now, I'm sorry to say at this point in time, I just cannot recommend this one. For a lot less money, you can buy Lenovo's excellent Legion Slim 7 or the Yoga Pro 9i. Both of those laptops feel more premium, they are more portable, especially the Pro 9i, and they just don't have the usability issues of this laptop. Yes, I get that the Framework 16 is upgradable and has phenomenal Linux support, but right now, the delta to those other laptops and the price difference, it's just too great. If you want to see the full list of laptops that we've used and wholeheartedly recommend, please check out our new website. They're all listed there. I do plan to revisit this Framework 16 laptop after the Framework team has just had more time to address some of these usability issues. If you like this mega review from us, please smash that like button and get subscribed. It shows your appreciation and helps the channel grow, which means that we can create more content for you, which we love doing. Plus, as I always say, it makes my dearest mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.